Hi, this is Jason Mazza. I'm here with Sean Evans, and we're on Back to the Movies. Today on Back to the Movies, we have Jason Mazza, star of The Hooligan Factory. How are you doing today, Jason? I'm very well, thank you, mate. Very well. Good, good. So I want to start this interview off and ask the most important question first. I mean, this question is kind of going to decide our entire interview and see how it goes. So uh, what football team do you support, Jason? I'm a West Ham fan. Uh, it's been that... great speaking to you on Back to the Movies, <laughs> Jason. Um, it's nice to have you on the show. Um... <laughs> Who, who are you? Who are you? I'm a Manchester United fan. You know, you know what I've got to say. I've got a massive soft spot for Manchester United. So that, yeah, I'm, I'm excited about next year for you. You know, you've got Van Hal, you've got Luke Shaw. I'm excited, mate. Yeah, it's going to be good. I mean, Van Hal's kind of proved himself at the the World Cup. I mean, what manager's going to bring on a, a goalkeeper just for a penalty shootout? You know what I mean? It's a... absolute legend that. Isn't it? That's <laughs> quality. Fantastic. Yeah. I mean, West Ham have got a promising season. You know? I mean, they they hung in there last season. They they stayed up. That's the main thing. No, I don't. I don't know if it is, mate. To be <laughs> honest, I think I would be more happier that we would have gone down and then replaced the manager because Big Sam, you know, you know what you're getting. But I mean, the football was absolutely dire last last year. It was it was horrific. So you know, I I don't know how we're going to change that. I mean, they brought in Teddy Sheringham, you know, our attacking coach. Um, so yeah, I mean, maybe he'll get us playing like Real Madrid next year. But yeah, the football was was horrible, horrible last year. You so know. hopefully, you know. Yeah, hopefully we start playing some better football and keep the ball on the ground. It'd be nice. Yeah, I think it would be nice. I saw them at Old Trafford and they played some good football second half, but first half it was oh, it's terrible. It was like watching a League One side. Yeah, it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. <laughs> at least you can't chant uh, "We're playing like Brazil" because it just doesn't work anymore, does it? Really? Yeah, no, yeah, for no one to be honest. <laughs> so I, I just want to say thanks for joining us, Jason, and. Um, in the Hooligan Factory, you play a character called Danny. Now, can you give us an overview of what the film is about and how Danny is linked within the storyline? Okay, so the Hooligan Factory is the first ever spoof comedy of the hooligan genre. Um, spoofing films like, you know, Rise of the Foot Soldier, The Football Factory, Green Street, The Firm, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and I play a character called Danny, um, whose sort of main goal in life is that he's always, as far back as you can remember, he always wanted to be a hooligan. And uh, on his journey, you know, he's looking for a father figure. He's looking to be a part of something, to belong. And he meets the absolute lunatic, which is the character called uh, Dex, played by Nick Nevin. And they go on a journey as old as hooliganism itself. That makes no sense, but we've we've coined the phrase and, and we love it. So, yeah. It's a nice little quote from the trailer there. <laughs> Fantastic. I mean, Nick Naverne is directing and acting in the movie as well. I mean, did it help that both you and Nick have been in hooligan films in the past? Obviously, Nick being in the Sweeney, for instance, and your experience in uh, Rise of the Foot Soldier. Yeah, I think that the thing that is, is that what it meant was is that we approached the movie with love and care rather than just we're going to absolutely rip the sort of you know, the piss out of this, of this genre. It wasn't really about that. For us, it was about, you know, it was almost like a, like a celebration. Like, yes, we were going to spoof and we were going to lampoon and we were going to you poke fun of it, but it was going to come from a good place. And I think hopefully that's why the fans of the genre, you know, are, you know, the feedback we've got so far, really enjoying it just because they can see that it's not been done with, it's been done out of love, really. And um, But yeah, so maybe it did, it did make it easier that we sort of, we know the films that we were, you know, satirising and, and we know that world. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, with the history, with you saying you're a West Ham footballer uh, supporter, I mean, does it help with you knowing such a good firm knowledge of the older West Ham firm days? Did it help to put that in and, and being a West Ham supporter? Did it help at all? I don't know if it helped with, with the hooligan factor just because it was, you know, it's it, it's so crazy and it's so anarchic and it's like, it's properly mental. And actually, you know, you, you are look, always looking for the truth, obviously, but it's not really about, you know, the rucks and, and what goes on. It's a lot more to it, whereas... I suppose in something like Rise of the Foot Soldier, knowing the history, being around it, you know, in a serious movie, that helped because, you know, I could, I could relate and I could, you know, I could remember being, you know, in the stands when it was going on or whatever. So, but yeah, but with this movie, The Hooligan Factory, because it was, you know, it's a comedy and it was always about comedy coming first, 
you know, we wasn't really looking for what was it actually like, you know, when you was having a, you know, a tear up, you know, hence, uh, you know, I don't know if you've seen the, seen the film or seen the trailer, but when, you know, when, when I, Danny's character walks over and punches the guy and he breaks his glasses and there's just that, that moment where I can't believe that I've just hit someone, you know, you know, you, you do the obligatory sort of verbals, you know, it, that's just a joke and that would obviously never happen. So, you know, so yeah, so... Yeah, I thought it was fantastic that bit in the trailer. He punches him and breaks his glasses. And, he, and the exact line he quotes reminded me of uh, Will from The Inbetweeners, you know, that, you broke my glasses. You broke my glasses! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought it was absolutely fantastic. I mean, even in certain clips of the movie, there are nods to Green Street, obviously, and uh, I've watched a clip as of this morning involving a Land Rover sk- scene, which reminded me exactly of the scene from uh, Rise of the Foot Soldier then. I mean, was this important that you reference these movies in order for the audience to relate to the film, or is it just something you guys wanted to throw in there as a nod to all the the previous hooligan films out there no it was really it was really important for us you know well obviously it was a spoof so we had to obviously spoof the uh, mm. the movies um but um but yeah but no it was it was really important and obviously hopefully you know if you do recognize the moments hopefully there's more comedy that comes from that so that was that was the, that was the thought process behind it really you know taking something that we all know and we've already seen a million times and then throwing a new spin on it so that yeah i think it really helps the comedy yeah, it's fantastic. It seems like Spoof is uh, making a, a slight comeback. I mean, do you agree with that? I mean, we've got Marlon Wayans who's doing his spoofs of like horror films with a haunted house. We've got Scary Movie, which is, you know, it's still out there, but it's not as big as it used to be. And obviously, um, The Hooligan Factory as well is now spoofing something that's never been done before. Do you think that's kind of like the future of comedy, maybe? Well, I tell you what, we'd love to do. We'd love to do more. So if people, you know, you know, the, the film's out on Monday, so if enough people go and buy it, we'd, we'd love to. We'd love to make another one. I mean, I, I'm a big fan of comedy. I love, I love comedy. I love acting in comedies. I love watching comedies. And I just think, you know, us Brits, what we do very well, uh, we we make gritty and and meaningful movies, and we do that really, really well. But sometimes you can leave that movie going. I feel a bit. That was amazing, but it's taken a lot out of me. Whereas, you know, I love the idea of going to the cinema or putting on a DVD with your friends and just, um, and just, you know, having a chuckle for an hour and a half, having a right good laugh, and and that's hopefully what you'll get from the Hooligan Factory. Yeah, definitely. I'll definitely put a pre-order in as soon as we finish the interview to help you out. Love you, mate. Love that. Love that. (laughs) No problem. I mean, during the hooligan crowd scenes, I mean, how difficult were these to shoot? Were there any mishaps on set that you can tell us about, or was it all just good banter in between? Mate, there was a there was a couple. I mean, look, we made this big speech at the start because we had like 300 essays down there. Um, You know, it was like, listen, guys, it's a comedy. Yes, you know, we want it to look real in parts, but remember, it's all about the fun. Let's make sure no one gets hurt. And on that day, we had um, uh, Jamie from Total Film down there, the journalist, and uh, and you know who's in the scene in the trailer when he gets his glasses broke. And um, yeah, and if there was one person on set that you didn't want to get hurt, uh, well, our first action goes, everyone comes in, and then suddenly we hear, stop, stop, someone's been hurt. Everyone pulls away, and the person on the floor is Jamie from Total Film, and me and Nick were like, oh my god, this this couldn't be. Any worse? He's got blood over his nose. Um, you know, we're thinking, is this is this over? Is it is, it, is, it, is it done? But luckily, he was a, he was a really good sport, and um, and he actually was like, no, don't worry about it. It's all part of it. So that was that was really cool. And then another one, the fight days. It always makes me chuckle. Is that we had Tom Burke, um, who is completely not from this world, and um, you know, and uh, and there's a scene. So they're lining up, and Nick says, you know, the director says, listen, guys. What I want you to do is just pick someone across the way, you know, look at them in the eyes, know that you're going towards them, and, you know, just so you know that. So Tom does it, and he's like, oh, so, hi, hi guys, so we, me and you, yeah? And the guy just looks at him and is like... <laughs> and then Tom was like, Nick, is this, is this actually safe, Nick? And then Nick just shouts action, get on with it. Um, so, yeah, that always made me chuckle. <laughs> that sounds fantastic. Sounds like a lot of fun on set. I mean, Danny Dyer makes a cameo appearance in the movie. I mean, adding to the whole London gangster swag there. I mean, how is it working with Danny and what made him come on board to star in The Hooligan Factory? Uh, well, he doesn't star, he makes a cameo, but we was honoured that he, he came and, and done it. I mean, it was really important to myself and Nick, again, for the fans as well, you know, that we, we wanted to make sure the movie was peppered with iconic people from the, the, the original films like Danny Dyer's, like your Craig Fairbrass, his Tamar Hassan. So, you know, it was a real honour. That, that, um, that Danny said yes and I think all those guys what happened was is they read the scripts and they just got it and I think they felt like you know what this genre's been brilliant but it's been done to death it's time to sort of reinvent the wheel and they all got it and Danny was, was the same and he was you know he was just he's brilliant he's brilliant and he's 
you know, he's just a genuinely nice guy and was like, guys, I love what you're doing. I'm up for being a part of it and sort of having a laugh at myself. So, yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. I mean, like we said before, I mean, I haven't seen the film yet, so I was waiting to ask you this question. I mean, if you had three words to describe the movie, what would they be and why? Funny, anarchic, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and and brilliant. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> pretty much describes it. You don't even need to explain why. I mean, they pretty much describe themselves there. So, yeah. I mean, imagine you're in a mob, Jason. You've just finished a match. You're all up for it, ready for a scrap. If you had to choose a soundtrack for your gang to march to, what would it be? Theme tune with Rocky. <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic, yeah. I mean, I can just imagine that running up some steps uh, down West Ham and uh, having It'd a nice be amazing. Walk. It'd be amazing. We can wrap it up there. I mean, I just want to say thanks for coming on the show, Jason. It's been an absolute pleasure. I wish you all the best of luck with the Hooligan Factory, and it's uh, been great chatting to you, mate. And you, mate. Thank you very much. No